Alright, hello everybody. This is Joe or McManus Design here, and today I'm finally bringing you guys a tutorial on the way that I do my jersey swaps. Um, I know you guys have been waiting for a while for this, so I'm I'm excited to finally put it out there and make this for you. I'm gonna take it uh, step by step, all the way through the whole process. As you see, I'm starting with this this picture of Xavier McKinney. Uh, the Giants released their jersey numbers today, so I was waiting for that to make this video. Uh, so here we go. First, you're going to cut out the player. I've already done that to save a little bit of time. Make sure you do it on a layer mask. It's this button down here in the bottom right. Uh, that's very important for the method that I use. So first step, cut it out however you want to. I use the pen tool, but you can do quick select a mask or however else you might want to do it. Uh, so the next thing you want to do, use Command-J or Control-J to duplicate this layer. I like to rename it to Jersey because we're going to do the Jersey first. Uh, make sure you click on this Layer Mask button here. And then what you're going to do is use that Pen Tool again, or you can do Quick Select if you want to, and you're going to go around the entire Jersey, just the Jersey part, with that. And then I'll show you what we have to do next after I get that done. I'll speed this part up. All right. All right. So I have this path from the pen tool around just the jersey. What I'm going to do is right click anywhere inside the canvas, make a selection. Zero pixel feathering is fine. Uh, all right. So I have the selection on the jersey. What I want to do now is this keyboard shortcut is Shift Command I to invert the selection here. And I'm just going to hit delete and it's going to get rid of everything else outside of the jersey. Command D to deselect everything. You can see now all I have on this layer is just the jersey. That's going to be important for later. But uh, so I like to do that first. Now, same thing, but I'm going to do it with the pants um, and then the helmet and the face mask. All the elements I'm going to cut out in that same way. And then I'll change the colors and remove the, the elements and stuff. Uh, so I will talk to you guys again when I finish doing all that. So I think I should clarify what I'm doing here quickly. Um, so for the helmet, you miss these little parts when you select the whole thing in the layer mask. So what I do, again with the pen tool, go over these little areas that you didn't get and then you just shift F5 and fill it with the foreground color which is white and you add that part to the layer mask so now it appears again. So you just need to make sure that all pieces of the helmet and the jersey, which I'll do later. Um, are included in that layer mask or else they're not going to change when you change things later. So now I have all the main parts of this uh, this jersey swap cut out. I'm, I'm not going to do the face mask yet because the Giants actually have a gray face mask just like Alabama does so I might not need to change that at the end but if I do I will change that later. Uh, so now we can move into doing the uh, actual switching of the jersey. So instead of being on this layer mask thumbnail, you need to click on the actual photo and then you can take your your uh, polygonal lasso tool or you can take the pen tool however you want to do it and what I do is just go around these elements like this uh, this patch here. Um, I'll show you what to do once I get around this and all right there we go shift f5 again and instead of foreground color you're going to want to fill with content aware and that should do a pretty good job of getting rid of that and looking pretty natural on the jersey still you see that this part comes from the shoulder pad over here so if you want to get rid of that take the clone tamp clone stamp tool over here hold option on mac to uh, select the area that you want to get rid of 
or that you want to draw from, and you can use this to get rid of that extra mark that appeared from the content aware tool. So that looks pretty good. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is remove all the other, the number, the Nike logo, the Alabama logo, and this patch over here from the jersey, and then I will see you guys again. All right, so I wasn't able to find any pictures of any giant wearing 29 that were high enough quality, but I had this picture of Landon Collins instead because he has the 20 in the number, so we can use this too. But mainly right now, we want to focus on the color of the jersey. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do is select this jersey layer and then hit this gradient map adjustment to put a layer above it, clip it, to the jersey layer by holding option and clicking in between the two layers then click over on this part of the thumbnail instead and click on the color bar here and what I'm gonna do go to the bottom of it and find the darkest part of the jersey click that go about halfway click the middle of the jersey and then on the far right get a really light part probably make it even lighter and then let's see, still a little dark, so what we can do is drag this that way, probably to about a quarter of the way. Then I'm gonna put this one at three quarters of the way and get another lighter portion of the jersey on here. Mm. Let's see. And you can mess with these sliders to kind of get what you're looking for. Um. Hmm. We're getting there. I'm going to make this one a little bit lighter. All right, that should be good for now. Uh, so that's that's how I do the color. Obviously, you could you could do the hue and hue and saturation layer, or you could do like a color fill layer with curves under it. But that's a little bit more complicated. I kind I like the the gradient map layer because you can adjust the colors and the levels as much as you want to. Uh, so that's normally what I would use for this. Um, so yeah, moving on. Uh, now we need to start adding some of these elements from the Giants jersey onto this Xavier McKinney jersey. Uh, so what I would like to do first is grab this NFL crest here on the chest. It's a little low quality, but it might work because the, the other picture is a little bit more zoomed out. Uh, again, I like to clip it to that jersey so everything is only showing on top of where the jersey mask is from what we did before. Then you can kind of mess with this. Uh, if, you, if you hold command after you're in the transform tool, uh, then you can, you can mess with the perspective of the, the layer. So that looks pretty good. Might need to straighten it out just a little bit. Move it around. And it looks a little off. So I'm gonna keep messing with this just a little. Trying to get this uh, NFL logo to look like the right angle. Uh, still needs to be a little bit more flat. That might work. All right, so since we already have the same like indention detail from the Alabama jersey, I'm just going to erase this whole background from this layer, just using the eraser tool. It doesn't have to be perfect since it's a similar color. Um, and then using that, I can get a better feel for where this needs to be positioned. Um, we're getting there. It's, it's a lot of t a lot of tweaking. Um, usually, just keep messing with things until it starts to look right. Um, so yeah, that's what I am doing now. It's not quite there yet. There we go. That should be better. Eh, it works for the purpose of this. All right, maybe a little bit smaller. And hold shift to make sure you keep the aspect ratio when you're transforming things like this. Mm. Alright, good enough for now. 
the light, it might be a little bit light, so I take this uh, burn tool over here, set it to highlights, exposure pretty low, and then I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. All right, there we go. Mm, yeah, so what I like to do before I do the numbers is get make the layer invisible of the jersey so I can see where the numbers were on the original jersey where I know how to put them on this one. Uh, so I, I see where, where that kind of curves. So I'm gonna go back to this, this Landon Collins uh, layer and I'm gonna go around the edge of this too roughly uh, and just select that with the polygonal lasso tool. All right, there we go. So Command J to duplicate just that part of the selection. Get rid of that layer. I'm gonna clip this again to the jersey. Bring it up there. Do a little messing with it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna put it there for now. And then now I need to find a nine. So again, I'm gonna go back to Google and I'm going to find someone on the Giants with a nine in the second half of the number on the jersey. All right, so I have this picture of Lorenzo Carter, uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the number on Landon Collins with this, this quick uh, polygonal lasso tool roughly around the edges. It does not have to be anywhere close to perfect. Uh, so there we go, make that selection, Command J, duplicate it, and do the same thing, clip it to the jersey, and I'm going to position it roughly uh, to be about the same size as this two. All right, so obviously that does not look great right now, so I'm going to mess with the perspective uh, in order to make these a little bit more similar. Uh, and then I hit Command and click on the both of them so I can move them at the same time. All right, so here we have, have these two numbers. They don't look anything alike. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is get rid of all this excess uh, blue from the other jerseys on the outside just using the eraser tool it can be it has to be a little bit accurate but it, it doesn't have to be perfect just because it's all using blue um, but yes I will get back to you guys after I finish doing this All right, now that I have all that excess erased, what I want to be able to do is make sure that these numbers match as closely as possible in the color. So I like the color of this nine better than I do like the color of the two. So I'm gonna select the two over here and do another gradient map from that selection. I'll clip it to the jersey again just to keep everything organized. But what I want to do is grab some of the color from this uh, 9, because that's what I want to match it to. It looks a little bit too plain right here, so I'm going to bring these closer together. Hopefully that helps a little bit. I just kind of mess with that. Um, might add another one from this part. Alright, not too bad. Alright, I think that's what I'm happy with. So, I'm going to merge these layers here in a second. Well, let me see. All right, I'm just gonna turn down the opacity a little bit to kind of keep those shadows from the original image. So what I'm gonna do is take this gradient here and merge it down onto that two. So the color is set for that. And then I can go back and clean up these uh, edges that 
I left and that were accented by the color change. So I'm gonna do that quickly. Okay, so we got that. These look pretty similar to me. Uh, so now we're ready to merge these two letters together. So we just have one number 29 on the same la layer. Uh, but that obviously doesn't look right now. So the next step that we need to take is transform this again. I'm going to mess with the perspective a little bit from here. And then what I'm going to do is go to transform and warp. As you see, the jersey kind of bends around this corner. So I'm going to use the warp tool to capture that uh, dimension of the jersey in, in which uh, the number would, would follow. So I think I think that does it pretty well. Maybe just move it down just a pinch because we need to fit this NY in between there. All right. Mm. So I'm gonna keep messing with this. Kind of just keep playing around until it looks how I want it to look. Uh, the warp tool again, best friend in this. Um, just trying to get those contours the same as the jersey behind it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think that, that does a pretty good job of it. Um, so next for these numbers, we're going to want to get a little bit of shading going on to match these darker areas in the actual jersey behind it. So again, I'm going to pull up that burn tool, this hand thing on the on the left and just go over where I need it to be darker. Definitely there. Kind of just add some wrinkles to make it look more like the number belongs on this jersey and not the ones that it came from. Uh there Try not to go too overboard with that part because it could could end up looking worse, but just some light shadows, always good for this. Hmm, don't really like that. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. These wrinkles are a bit harsh, so I might try and use this dodge tool, which is the opposite of the burn tool to kind of get rid of the shadows on those just a little bit all right that looks pretty good um so there we go that's that's how i do the front number uh again it's a lot of just tweaking it until it looks pretty good um all right so now we'll move on as you see i have a couple resource pictures now uh we we gotta get this this ny logo from the front of the jersey and i'm gonna take it from landing collins again Clip it, transform it, and just size it accordingly. Uh, looks all right. Gonna just warp it a tiny bit to straighten it out. There we go. A little bit smaller, I think. Mm. All right. And now we're going to get rid of this this outside excess. Uh, material from the other jersey. Okay. So that looks a little dark. Uh, so what I'm going to do, command and hit this thumbnail to select it. And then I'm going to do a levels layer here. Uh, and then that allows me to kind of brighten this up without uh, brightening the blue behind it also that I didn't cut out. So there we go. That looks that looks better to me. It's still, still a little uh, colored but sometimes the, the jerseys just kind of uh, have, have some weird properties when, when you see them on the players on the field. So I think that looks pretty good um, for what we want. 
So now we will move on to the shoulder numbers, which are, could be a little bit difficult because we don't have the uh, any number 29 from the shoulder. So we're gonna have to be a little bit creative with this one. Um, let me just check and make sure there aren't any better resource photos out there that I could use for this because this part is a little bit tricky if you don't have the right pictures. All right, so I have this picture of Nat Burhey who wore 29 with the Giants at some point, and it has these shoulder numbers. Uh, I'm gonna try it with these. They could work. So again, I'm gonna roughly outline this with the pen tool just to get that number selected. All right, clip that to the jersey once again. And here we go. This is the tricky part. We need this to look like it's on this shoulder of the jersey. All right. We might need a full version of the number 29, but this might work. So again, I'm gonna use that warp tool to kind of fit this to the, to the curvature of the jersey. It's a little a little big, I think, so I'm going to mess with that. All right. And I'm going to change the perspective a little bit again. All right, that looks okay. Um, what I'm going to do is get rid of all this again with the eraser tool. So we got that. I'm actually pretty happy with that. how that looks. Uh, it might be a little bit bright. So again, I'm going to take that burn tool and just go over it a little bit, probably just one time. Yeah, all right, that looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, so now go to the other side. And the same picture works, should work. Again, with the pen tool. Same process as the last step, and I will talk to you guys once I finish that part. Alright, so next up, I'm going to grab this Nike logo for the shoulders from the Landon Collins picture from before which is just using the pen tool. Oop. All right. So I have a path, get rid of that. And then I'm going to transform it, right click and flip horizontal so that I can put it over on this shoulder. Um, and then size that. A little bit of perspective. Uh, Got to match that up with how the, the number is angled. Um, all right, so that looks pretty good. This this part's pretty uh, pretty simple. Just get rid of the extra like bright stuff on the outside. All right, there we go. We won't be able to see the Nike on the other side, and that's it for the jersey. It looks like. Uh, so we will move on to the pants now. Uh, what, first what I do is command click all these layers that are gonna be in the jersey, then hit command G and group them together and I'll just name the group jersey again. So I have everything on there in this. All right, on to the pants. Luckily for me, uh, they're white pants. The Giants wear white pants in real life, uh, so I won't have to change the color of the pants, which can be a little bit difficult. Same process as with the jersey, using the gradient maps usually, uh, but won't have to worry about that in this one. So we have the main elements, the Nike swoosh, uh, the stripe, 
and we won't be able to see the NFL crest because the hand would be covering it. So that's nice. This part should be pretty easy. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is recolor that swoosh, which is blue on the Giants uniforms. So I'm just going to adjust the hue for this one since it's such a small element. And invert the mask by hitting Command I on this this layer mask part, and then I'm going to use my white brush on that part to add the hue layer over the red, and we can make this blue pretty simply. So there we go. That part was pretty easy. Uh, might want to make it a little bit darker though which luckily we can do just by decreasing the lightness on this. And I'm gonna up the saturation just a little bit and make sure this is the right amount of color. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, so next up would be these stripes over here. Uh, you can barely even see the stripes, so I don't think that it would be worth it to add a giant's stripe uh, from a different picture over here. So instead, I'm going to take that same hue layer and change the color of this red stripe since it's just barely peeking out to that giant's blue. That's a little bit green, but it's dark in the shadow over here, so that should be okay. Just get these parts and make them blue. Maybe this is a little bit of, of cheating, but it, it shouldn't make a major difference in the final product because it's such a small part of this. This is a little bit green. Uh, let me see. How does that look? A little too purple. Okay. That looks all right. You know what, I'm just going to remove the stripes completely, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to try this uh, content aware fill again, just by selecting these parts that I want to get rid of because it's such a small area on the side. All right. There we go. Shift F5, content aware, and it's a little rough, but it looks pretty good over here. I'm gonna take a paintbrush tool and just kind of brush out these rough parts of it real quick. Kind of make the wrinkles match. All right. Um, this whole area kind of bothers me. So, Again, I'm going to do a little bit of cheating, and I'm just going to, to cut off this weirdly angled part of the pants. And make sure that you get rid of it on both the pants layer and this bottom layer. There we go. I actually think that looks better. Uh, now we won't, we won't be able to see any stripe since the angle that his leg is at, so we really don't need to worry about that. Let me just get rid of it on this side. Just using the paintbrush tool this time. All right. Uh, whoops, I deleted the, the hue for the Nike logo. I will redo that real quick. Okay, so that's that's all I'm gonna do for the pants. Um, I will take these two layers and put them in a group again, name it pants, and there we go. So next up, gonna do the helmet, which is probably one of the more difficult parts. Uh, but if you find a good resource image, then it can be done pretty efficiently. Uh, so I'm going to find a picture. 
So I have this picture of Nat Burhe again, wearing the number 29 Giants helmet, which is nice because I won't have to change these numbers from a different helmet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just pen tool around this whole helmet. So I have that cut out now, and I'm going to put it on top of the helmet mask layer that I had from before. Make it a little bit smaller first, and then I'm going to clip it, and now I get to mess with it and try and match the perspective. So first I like to mess with the, the traditional perspective tool from the transform portion. Uh, that turned out pretty good right there. Obviously there's a few gaps, but um, it looks, looks pretty good. And now we start making more tweaks. I'm going to use the warp tool here just to get this part of the helmet to look more how I think it should. There we go. Much better. Most importantly, this, this part of the chin strap should be close to the one underneath. All right, that is good for now. So next, obviously we have these gaps in the, uh, in the layer. So we need to fill those in with the blue color of the helmet. Uh, so a couple of ways that I could do this. I could take the clone stamp tool on this helmet layer and just continue to add to it until I fill up the whole thing or I could take the brush and the colors picker and use that for the more for the less detailed parts I see there's a there's a hole there um, this is positioned slightly differently um, but it, it looks it looks okay um, so I'm just gonna cover that one up and brush in these colors where they need to be. Oops, I forgot to, to add that part to the mask earlier. Make sure you get a little bit of variation so it doesn't just look like a, a solid color. Um, normally I would take a little bit more time on this, but uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going quickly. So the brightness of this helmet is a little bit different from the jersey, so something I'm going to try to fix that is using a curves layer and just tweaking it a little bit so that it comes closer. Uh, the red is a little bit off, I think, so I'm going to use a selective color layer, turn up the black in the red, and then turn down some of the other parts to make it a little bit less bright and saturated. That's a little better. So the helmet is almost done, but there's one more thing. Uh, now the NFL is only using those Oakley visor clips. So I'm gonna get rid of these. Actually, McKinney doesn't even wear a visor. It doesn't look like, oh, yes he does. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of these visor clips. Uh, so now I need the picture of the new clips. So I know that Saquon wears the visor. And there's plenty of good pictures of him. So I'm just going to find one at a similar angle. All right, this one works. It's the opposite direction, but the visor clips are very easy to flip. So I'm just going to flip the whole image. And then I'm going to grab this <laughs> pixelated uh, visor clip tab command J put it on top of the helmet layer get rid of this 
control T or command T to transform and then position this and warp it a little bit to get the correct perspective. All right, now I'm just going to brush in the underneath of the visor because it extends all the way below. And then I'm going to make it a little bit sharper because that doesn't look quite right. But it's such a small detail that it's hard to tell usually. All right, so there's the one, and then I'm just going to duplicate this, flip it, and warp it to this side. I actually need to add this part to the helmet layer mask so that it'll be visible. And there we go. So the next step is going to be changing the color of these gloves and this shoulder pad, which is pretty easy. I'm going to group the helmet layers again as, as I have for the past ones. I can't type. And get rid of that. I can get rid of all these. And now I'm just going to work on the base cutout layer. I'm going to do Q and saturation, clip it. And then adjust this so that that blue is similar to what we have on the jersey. And then all I got to do is brush it in over the red, get rid of some of this extra red around the, the jersey too. And then over the gloves, same thing. Very easy when it's on white because there's no other color to change. Um, but yeah, this part is pretty simple. That's why I do it at the end. Um, and there we go. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is make these NFL tights. Uh, so again, I'll use that gradient map to accomplish this. Gonna need to be pretty bright because the legs are a little bit dark. All right, that should be good to start. I'm going to invert that using Command I, and then again, since we have these other layers, we can just brush in. And what I do to make it look less like uh, like the skin is add an empty layer above it, and then select this color a little bit brighter and then go over the edges to make it just look like it has that dull lighting effect that the tights would have. All right. All right, so what I'm gonna do now that I see the whole thing is actually turn up the saturation on the jersey a little bit. There we go. That looks like it fits a little bit better and I'm going to mess with this on the pants as well to match it closer. All right. And there we go. We have we have the swap complete, I think. Uh, maybe a, the helmet could use a little bit more work. Uh, I'm gonna add another curves layer on top of all this. Just to try and even that out a little bit. All right, that's a little bit better. Um, all right, so we have the swap. What I'm gonna do, select all, everything that we've done, Command G, group it, and name it swap. So now, all I have to do is add a background. So the way that I do that is by finding another picture of a, of a current Giants player at Giants Stadium. And then I will show you how I get that to be Xavier McKinney on it. All right. So I have this picture of Jibberl Peppers in a similar position to Xavier McKinney. It's a little bit big, so I'm going to make it a tad bit smaller. 
All right, that should work. And now I have to remove Jabril. First, I'm gonna fill in this top area, this empty part with content aware. Should do a decent job. Might have to make a little bit of an adjustment afterward to get rid of this part of the helmet, it looks like. So I'm just gonna lightly do some clone stamping. Try not to make it obvious. It's pretty blurry in the background, so it should be pretty easy. But all right. Now the tricky part is gonna be getting rid of all of this and keeping the detail in the background intact a little bit. So the field is pretty easy. I'm gonna take this part of the line here and just go above and continue to clone stamp that way. All right, now the other side to get rid of that extra that I left and just continue to take little portions and erase the parts that you can see. All right, here we go. Gotta get rid of this side. Small portion of it. Grab another bit. And just continue to do that until everything is mostly gone. And all right, so the field looks good. Now, this part with the wall. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. Usually I will take the paintbrush again and kind of brush the correct color over that spot. It's just so I can try it and keep this, this text here intact as much as possible, which I'm gonna have to repaint. So, what I'm going to do is start by trying that. Not quite there. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Maybe grab, grab this side of the lettering and do that. Then I can grab my white in the middle and make a pretty good L. I think that looks all right. If you're paying attention to the swap, then you probably won't notice that this is painted in. Um, so now, get rid of this part. Which actually, I'm going to clone stamp again because there should be another L here. Um, so there we go. That is good. Uh, now the other side. Same thing, gonna paint this blue part of the wall in again, since it's not detailed. And then just continue to grab different colors where I think that this should go. It's gonna need to be a little bit darker. I see a photographer there, trying not to <laughs> mess with that too much. Um, all right, so now we got to reconstruct these letters. Same thing, gonna take that color from the outside border, make a little bit of an eye, <laughs> something resembling an eye. And then I can take my white. It's a little bit bright. That's not quite what I want. And since that turned out bright, I'm gonna go back to my burn tool on the highlights and darken that up a little bit. And then take my blue brush to kind of flatten out this super curved edge. All right, not not terrible. Uh, I believe that there's a G, so that could be a little bit tricky. 
especially since I cannot see it. So actually what I'm going to do is slide this background over just a little bit. And instead of reconstructing that difficult part, I will rebuild this easier part on the left side so that that G that I need is covered up by McKinney's body instead of being shown in the background. So I'm just gonna need to do a little bit more painting here in the background than I did before. And I'm gonna have to redo this a little bit. All right, we're getting there. Gonna take my clone stamp tool again, get this part. And make sure there's nothing else in the background. And straighten this out just a little bit. And there we go. There's Xavier McKinney on the Giants. And once I get this filled in, we are done. There you go, that's how I do my jersey swaps. A little bit rushed because of the tutorial, but I think it came out pretty good. And if you take your time on these things, then you should be able to make some, some great stuff. Uh, thank you guys for 100 subscribers on YouTube and 9,000 subscribers or followers on Instagram. Uh, I really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to what's in the future. So thank you.